Well, thank you for staying with us here on One America News. I'm Sani Unutoa. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan is set to travel to Saudi Arabia to have discussions with the Crown Prince. Well, Thursday's meetings comes as a way to mediate tensions in the Middle East and potentially broker a post-war deal between Saudi Arabia and Israel. For the details ahead of this meeting, we go live now to One America's Chief White House Correspondent, Monica Page. Uh, good morning, Monica. Uh, what does the Biden administration hope comes out of these discussions? Good morning, Sonny. More details have been released this week regarding National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan's trip to Saudi Arabia. The trip is intended to normalize a relationship between both Israel and Saudi Arabia and really comes after previous plans were put on ice since the assault on Israel began. So for Israel's take on this upcoming trip, I want to bring in spokesperson for the office of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Tal Heinrich. Tal, thank you so much for joining us. But before we jump into this interview here, I want to ask you, uh, I know that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has recently undergone surgery. Uh, I was doing some research and found out that this surgery was very recent. Uh, give us a little update update on how the prime minister is feeling. Is he in good spirits? Uh, definitely, Monica. Thank you for having me on. The prime minister was discharged from the hospital yesterday. He's undergone a surgery, but uh, he's he's feeling great. He's back to his daily routine, consultations, conversations, discussions, leading the country amidst a war. Good. That's very positive. We're happy to hear that. Now, now this meeting that's happening this week is what the Biden administration is hoping is a push for progress. But how does Israel stand right now with Saudi Arabia? Do you believe this meeting could lead to steps in the right direction? Here a little before I directly um, address your question. I think it's not coincidental uh, the fact that October 7th, this attack, this Hamas massacre happened uh, right when Israel and Saudi Arabia were apparently on the brink of reaching some major diplomatic breakthrough because, you know, uh, you have these terrorist elements all across our region and it all goes back to the axis of evil led by Iran uh, that is trying to hurt Israel by its proxies, but uh, they're trying to hurt you know, uh, development and progress all across the Middle East. Uh, so it's all part of that. You have these terrorist elements that want to uh, push us back, and you have the, the the good forces, so to say, in the region that wants to move forward towards peace. So uh, one of the goals with you know eliminating the Hamas terrorist organizations, uh, terrorist organization, and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Gaza is that we will able to progress and have a better horizon uh, between us and our Palestinian neighbors. And also, in, in the larger scheme, um, expand the circle of peace of the Abraham Accords, uh, of course. Right. The Abraham Accords were something that President Trump proved was peace through strength. And now it really seems like having Jake Sullivan go over to Saudi Arabia is something that is trying to repeat something like the Abraham Accords. But uh, for the Biden administration, what would those steps, these positive steps, need to look like in order to achieve this peaceful relationship? Well, these are things that are between uh, Washington and, and Riyadh, I would say. Uh, right now, we are focused on, on the war in Gaza. I don't think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not realistic to talk about peace right now. Uh, unfortunately, when we are in the middle of a war fighting uh, to, to, to defend our country, fighting, you know, that Hamas won't live another day, rearm, regroup, and, and attack us again with another October 7th massacre. Um, we do want to see in the day after Hamas, uh, moderate Muslim countries from the region involved in the reconstruction of Gaza, which also must be intertwined with the radicalization of the Palestinian society, something like the, the Marshall Plan, uh, so to say. Now, Todd, there are a lot of reports that Democrats are kind of starting to stray from Israel. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is one of them, saying the prime minister has been too willing to tolerate civilian deaths. How are those comments and how is that resonating with Israel and what would Israel want these kinds of Democrats to know? First, that it's not true. Israel uh, regrets any, you know, any, any kind of uh, collateral damage, uh, but that is the, the result of war, a war that we didn't start and didn't want. And uh, my country has taken unprecedented uh, steps in, in the history of urban modern warfare to minimize civilian casualties in Gaza and to minimize the civilian suffering of Palestinians in Gaza, which is exactly what Hamas is trying to maximize in order uh, for international pressure to be used as leverage against Israel. And again, 
Let them live another day. Let them survive with their evil regime. Um, so I think it's a moment for moral clarity. It's been a moment for moral clarity since October 7th, just like George W. Bush said right after 9-11, it's either you're with us or you're with the terrorists. So same applies here. You know, we're saying the same thing 20 years after 9-11 um, with uh, the worst terrorist attack, you know, around the world since since then, the, the, the largest atrocities inflicted upon the Jewish people since, since the Holocaust. So um, it's, it's either your team Hamas or your team Israel here, really. Right. There's no in between. And Tal, before we go, I do want to ask you about the seven humanitarian workers killed in these Israeli strikes. President Biden has condemned these strikes. Israel has since apologized for this tragedy. Like you mentioned, it's never the intention to kill civilians. But now President Biden is accusing Israel of not doing enough to protect aid workers. I mean, it's difficult. I'm sure you're in war. But how could something like this be avoided? It is a an awful, awful tragedy. It should not have happened, and we must do everything we can to make sure that it won't reoccur. For that reason, the defense minister, the prime minister, they've ordered the IDF to uh, carry out a thorough investigation, the findings of which will be made public. It will be transparent. We'll also present it to the World Central Kitchen and other aid organizations. Um, we all want to better this mechanism of aid distribution. And you know, Monica, the, these were... Um, the good guys, uh, people who were working uh, with us, uh, facilitating and distributing the aid, uh, making sure that it will reach uh, the people who needed the Palestinian civilians uh, and not, uh, not not aid that will be stolen by uh, by Hamas. Um, so we, we we deeply regret this incident. Our IDF chief of staff he came out yesterday in a statement uh, during uh, overnight, and he, and he said that it was uh, definitely a mistake. It was unintentional, and it was followed by misidentification. Of, uh, of these uh, of of these uh, cars, these uh, vehicles um, during night in very difficult dif difficult battle uh, conditions. Right, and you know, you're when you're in war, you know, you just never ever know. And so, before we go, once again, where does the prime minister's relationship stand with President Biden at the moment? I mean, there have been reports that they have a very chilly relationship right now. I'm wondering, you know, straight from the office of the prime minister, how that relationship stands currently. So we are very grateful and thankful for the Biden administration for, you know, giving us the tools uh, to get the job done, because we do see eye to eye with Washington um, and according to polls also with, you know, the American people um, about the necessity uh, on the necessity of, of eliminating Hamas. You know, Hamas can be no more and there is no question about it. We all want the same things. We want all hostages, 134 of them to come back home. We want our stolen people back. Uh, Washington is, is fully behind this war objective of ours as well. And uh, uh, we want to make sure that Gaza will never pose a terror threat to us again. But while we're working on achieving these goals, uh, we want to make sure that uh, it, these uh, objectives are carried out with full consideration of civilian care in Gaza. Tal Heinrich, spokesperson for the office of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, thank you so much for joining us. I could talk to you about this all day, but we appreciate your time. Thank you, Monica.